so adding strain to your course and uh, well hence you're adding it to your satellite overlay and then that adds a strained look to your course um, if you look at your fairways and your rough and you just think, ah, this looks too perfect, you know, it doesn't look realistic, um, this is going to be a, a good tip for you here. Uh, you might, uh, this might not be something you want to do. Maybe you want that perfect, you know, green look to your course and that's fine too. So I'm going to show you right off the bat what this is. Now, first of all, let me give credit to DPR. He did this in his uh, tutorial as well, so I kind of stole it. And then a while back I was doing a course and he said, hey, you know, try adding some grunge or strain to your course. And I did it. So I got to give him credit for this one for sure. Uh, look, wrong screen. Let's go into my course and you can see. So here's a shot. It looks pretty good, right? However, it's just it's damn perfect, right? The fairways are just perfect. There's no blemishes. Now I have this AO on here and I do have some um, you know, mow lines over here and they're kind of like broke so they're not perfect, but it's still to me it's just too perfect. So take a look at this. I'm gonna pause the video and I'm gonna turn the strain on so you can get an idea of the difference. Let me pause. Okay, so here is it with the strain added to it. Now I'm not completely done here. I still have this everywhere. It's on my greens and on my tee boxes and stuff. So I might mask this out some more, but you get the idea. Now there's some like, it almost, you're not quite sure if it's cart paths. It could be old cart paths. It could just be some disease on the golf course. Um, you can see there's some dark strains and there's some white strains, All right? I'm gonna show you how to do both. You might want one, you might want the other, you might want both. So um, let me pause again and let me show you how to get started with this. So I'm here on this textures.com website. You could do a Google search. You can probably find some things you can use in Google. Um, I'll show you how to adjust the backgrounds as well. If you can find one with a transparent background, um, that's even better because then you can skip a step here. But um, I just did a search in here for grunge. What I did found is that rather than grunge, all these are kind of grunge, scratched paint is also a really good one. So if I scroll down through here, see these these ones right here are pretty good. Um, for instance, this scratch is three. And then when I open this up, there's even some other choices in here. So I, these are all seamless, which is also a, a good thing. So I got seamless. And if I look at these, um, I can zoom in and uh, let me zoom in. And then I can hold Z to zoom in even further. So that's pretty good. I like that one. And you can see on this site, they offer different sizes. Take a note of the size. And if they don't figure out the size, you can you can see it in Adobe. So the reason being is just like we've done in other things in, in Photoshop on my other tutorials, we're going to turn this into a pattern. And if you download, you can work with any size, really. But you don't, the small size will work fine. So if you can get that for free, right? Um, so I'll work with, uh, I think I'll work with the 512. I'll download this. I won't show you that me downloading it. Um, and then we'll figure this out. But the reason I want to say is 512 by 512, our satellite overlay is 8192 by 8192. So if we turn this into a pattern, it's going to go 16 wide and 16 down, right? So it'll be a 16 by 16 grid of this. So that's what you just have to keep a note of. No matter what size you end up getting, you might have to adjust the size so when you pattern it inside of your um, uh, Photoshop, it's the appropriate size. Because you don't want these scratches really big um, and you don't want them extremely small either. But I find like something like, you're just gonna have to play with it, the bottom line. Um, but this one, 512 by 512, this one's probably gonna work really well and, it, and I might not even have to resize it. So here we are in Photoshop and let's go and open up our scratch paint or grunge or whatever we downloaded here and the one that i did was 512 by 512. now this one will work in this current size it'll be 16 across and 16 down over our overlay um reason being this is 512 by 512 our overlay is 8192 by 8192 so it'll be 16 across 16 down if whatever grunge you have is either too big or too small, you just need to change the size. Uh, let me just show you how to do that quick. Uh, you're going to unlock the layer and then you can um, come up here do, you're going to do edit uh, canvas size. Where is it? Uh, or is it image? Yep. Canvas size. You change this to a uh, 1024 by 1024. 
it's just, uh, I can do this quick, 1,024 by 1,024. And again, I, there's no right or wrong size to this. It just depends on the image itself that you want to use. So now we want to come into this layer, which is down here, and we can change its transform. Or actually, we can go up here, which might be even easier. I can do uh, edit, transform, scale, and I can just drag this kind of out to the corners here. It should snap in should snap in maybe i don't have snap turned on huh, my snapping isn't working right now usually it does another way to do this probably better would just be open up a blank canvas it doesn't have to be perfect as long as it's on top of your image you don't have any uh you get the idea i apply that but i'm going to hit cancel out of that undo because I'm going to work with this size. Um, now the issue that we have is I want to turn this into a pattern that I'm going to put over top of my course, but I don't want the black background. I want this uh, these white things right going across. So um, since these are white, I want to get rid of the dark stuff. And I also have this cloudy gray. I want to try to get rid of that as well. So let me just zoom in here so I can see pixels. So you can see I got my definitely got my black pixels and I got some of these like gray cloud stuff. So let's go in here and we can do select color range. And now when I do that, I can use my sample colors. And if I come over here and I click now, watch this here right now, I don't have anything selected. Um, in my selection, everything white is well, you'll see here in a second. Let me click here in the dark and you can see now Everything I've selected as 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 white is what I have selected. OK, and I can bounce. If I hit control, it shows the beginning a difference right now. I still want a little bit more than that. So I'm going to come into one of these little gray areas here, the darker gray areas. And I'm going to down control or I'm sorry, shift. Now you can see, yeah, it's selected even more. And I can kind of keep on clicking around in these darker areas. And maybe find a pixel that's just a tad. There we go. That one got a little bit lighter. And you got to just play with this. That's pretty good. And now you can see that I've got these dark splotches, right, selected. Um, I'm going to hit OK. And now if I come out here and I hit delete, see what's going to happen. It deleted all the dark background. And now I really just have left were those scratches and hit control D and now you can just see the scratches that I have left now they're a little pixelated so I could come up here and I can do filter blur Gaussian blur that's too much let me just do like one pixel maybe Ooh, maybe that's even too much point can I do 0.5 I can but that really got rid of it I'm not sure if I'm a fan of this or not I'm gonna cancel leave that go um, Let's just try it at this. This might be OK. Um, again, you can play with the blur, or I might have to just go back and, and not remove so much that I did. But we're going to try this. Now, so I have this. This is 5 by 12 by 5 12. I got my clear background now. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to do Edit, Define Pattern. I'm going to call this, since this is a demo for you guys, I'm going to call this Demo Grunge Dark, because my my scratches are dark. I'm going to hit OK. Now let me come back here to my sad overlay. Just zoom out a tad. These are the grunges that I did, but they're hidden, so you guys can't see them because I'm showing you how to do it. I'm going to hit New Layer. And let's call this layer Demo Grunge Dark. And now I'm going to come over here to my uh, paint bucket tool, go up here to pattern, and my pattern should be in here. If I hover over this, it should say demo grunge dark. Sweet. Highlight that. And now I'm going to come down and uh, I'm just going to click on this layer and fill it in. And you can see what happens that grunge comes in. Um, however, this is extremely, it's just way too dark. So we're definitely going to want to lower the opacity here. And this is where what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to play with these settings. Now, I do happen to know what I did was here's my other grunge dark. This layer, I have it at 29% because <laughs> I experimented. I went down to 30 
and then I exported it into uh, Unity, took a look, that was too dark. So I'm, I know that this is going to be right around 27 is good for this. So I got that set at 27. As a matter of fact, let's just export this. Export as. I guess I'm going to show you guys what the dark looks like. And then I'm going to show you how to do the white. Uh, set overlay. Place it, yes. Wait till this is done, because if you go to Unity too early, it tries to seize the file. Back in Unity, wait till it updates. And now you can see, there it is. Now it is everywhere though, okay? Um, it's on my greens, it's on my fairways. Now you guys should know at this point how to use mask to remove it from certain areas, so I'm not gonna cover that. This is just the grunge piece. Um, so you can see, oh, maybe I will show you at the very end. But that looks pretty decent. Now, let's say you don't like the dark. Let's say you can tr also try the white as well. Now, if you want to do dark and white, that's a little tricky. So let me show you why. If I did the same thing here, well, let's first of all, let's go. Mm, let me pause a second. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't remember where this was at. Um, so we have our layer highlighted here. We're going to go up to uh, image adjustments and we're going to invert and what happens is it just turned everything that was black into whites and like everything was gray into the inverse gray you get it right but we really can't see this um and you'd think okay we could turn this into a pattern right pull it into unity but guess what's going to happen these are going to overlay in the exact same spots because it's the same pattern it's white so we got to change this a little bit now we could pixel shift it, but then we're gonna definitely like see stuff side by side in Unity. So I find the best thing to do is just rotate this whole thing. So to show you what I'm doing here, you wouldn't need, I'm just gonna put a black background in here, turn this down, uh, layer two. I'm gonna come over here to my paint bucket again, which I have on, and I'm just going to do uh, paint foreground, drop that in there. So now you can at least see what we're doing. Let me come back up here to this layer. I should be able to come up here to layer type image image rotation. Yep. And now we just rotate it. So now we should get some randomness compared to what it was before, right? Um, let's remove this because I just want to show you guys what happened. Uh, I'm going to remove that layer. So now we got this rotated one. Come up here to file. Uh, where was it? Nope, I'm sorry. It's edit, define pattern again. Uh, demo, grunge, white, rotated. <laughs> right? If I don't need to call it all that. Uh, come back here to my sat shader. I'm going to create a new layer. And I should name these layers, guys. You should name these layers. Oh, I did name it. Never mind. Uh, let me call this one. Ah. Demo, grunge, white, rotated. I'm going to come over here and uh, let's see here. Edit. I want to, nope, I want to go to my paint tool. Again, I'm sorry, my paint bucket tool. Got that selected. I'm going to do pattern. Me down here. That's it. And I'm going to click. And now you can see I've got the white, and it is not like it's completely different from the dark. And I mean, remember, I did play again with the opacity a bunch of times by exporting. I found that it was 8%. So I'm just going to drop this down to 8 Remember, you're going to have to play with that those numbers, export a bunch of times. I probably did it 10 times. So now you can see it's everywhere. I got white and I got dark. Let me do a file. Well, before we, let's shorten the video a little bit. Let's say that we only want this. You guys should remember how to do this. Um, let's say that you don't want it on your greens, right? Remember, we imported all these uh, splines, our Inkscape shapes. So we go over here, we're gonna turn our Inkscape shapes on. I've got my green layer highlighted. I go up here to my magic wand. 
magic wand selected and the select my green okay I can go up here to select modify expand let's say I want to expand this by a good let's say 10 pixels because I don't want those to be oops I contracted that control Z select modify expand 10 ah why is that going in did I select the wrong thing here control D let's try this again I have my greens there it is select modify expand 10 there we go hmm. I must have done the inverse before um, so now we got that expanded again we're going to do select modify feather and I would say you can feather we do it 10 let's have feather 5 so half that distance and now if I go back to these two layers where are okay we can do um, come in here layer layer mask Reveal selection. Oops, I did that backwards. Control Z. Layer. Layer mask. Hide selection. All right. Now the white doesn't show up there. Really have to do the same thing with our demo dark if we don't want that in there too. So we have to go in there. Uh, we go back up to our green layer. Make sure that's highlighted this and we could even make it so the brown blacks a little bit different so that might even give us a little bit more variety what I mean by that is let's do select modify expand but let's do this one out to say 15 right so that goes way out there and let's just feather the last five now so it's going to be slightly different modify uh, feather five cool and now let's come back down we can hide this now we're done with it we can come back down here to our demo uh, grunge dark layer layer mask hide selection and now our dark is gone there but you can see our white and dark are kind of they're still out here but they're hidden but at different spots so let's take a look at what this looks like. Let's do an export, export as JPEG. Overwrite our overlay. Wait till it's done. Go into Unity. Nothing's going to change here. What's going to change is where our greens are at. And I know the green we were just changed is over here. Should be any green, actually, the way we did it. There we go. So you can see now, I still have some tweaks to do here. I think the white should be actually lightened a little bit, but you get the idea. And I could, you know, definitely can do some strain. So play with it, have fun.